third object I've chosen to talk about with wood is a bit, um, it's a bit cheeky of me to some extent, but I also wanted to think in a really broad way about what wood is in the history of art and kind of how it exists. And I think a really fascinating tradition is woodcut making, um, which, which, which has its own really rich traditions in other cultures. I'm, sp I'm speaking particularly here of a kind of northern European culture, a culture that's, that's a pretty Germanic culture, you might say, a culture of, of, of making woodcuts uh, that really, I would say, dates back to the time of the Reformation. So it dates back to the 15th century. Um, a woodcut is something that has a kind of economic uh, reason to exist to some extent, because a woodcut is made by taking a slice of hard wood, carving into it with a series of chisels to create a kind of negative image. It's then covered in ink and pressed onto um, pieces of paper and you can keep replenishing it. You can keep adding more ink when the ink starts to wear down and you can make more. And during the Refor Reformation, the idea that you could make an unlimited edition, the idea you could keep producing images was really revolutionary at a time when basically you had to rely on a painting or a sculpture, which is only one thing. So if you can create an unlimited edition, you can disseminate all kinds of ideas. And those ideas that were being disseminated oftentimes were about Reformation politics. I'm putting all that in context because this is a German artist. This is Kette Kollwitz, who is the brilliant uh, 20th century German uh, printmaker and painter. But really, I think her most powerful work is, graph is, is in her graphic work, in uh, charcoal drawings and graphite drawings, but also, I think most powerfully, a work like this, which is called The Mothers from 1921. Um, now, I mentioned the idea of an edition because that's really important for printmaking. I mean, in the art market, um, the way that the value of a work of art or a, a work of art on paper is established is through its scarcity. Um, the scarcity of a, a, a or the, sh the shortness of a print run is really important when you establish the value of a, uh, of whatever it might be, a, a, some sort of modern print. Kata Kolwitz was very interested in the way that her woodcuts could be disseminated, could be released, as it were, almost virally um, across the country. And in other words, they acted a little bit like Reformation prints because they could be uh, distributed very easily and cheaply. Um, she actually made, this is one of a series of seven prints called War. Um, so it's a part of a portfolio of prints. And she did a number of different print runs of it. And so sometimes the print runs are more valuable than other print runs. The reason why she did that is that she really wanted the images to spread. Now, this is 1921 in Germany. What you have to know about Katakowicz, one salient biographical fact, is that her son uh, fought in the First World War and died. And so certain, I mean, unmistakably, certain images of, of, of mother and child certainly images that re relate to pietas are incredibly powerful. They, they would have to be, wouldn't they, if, if that, that's something you went through. Um, this one, I think, creates a kind of block, a kind of, it's like a black bag, or it's like a black rock. And as it were, carved into the rock are these figures of mothers, as they're identified in the, in the title, although their gender is not actually clearly expressed that have generated a kind of bundle of self-protection. They've created a kind of unit, like, a, like, an, un, like an indivisible, uh, hard, impenetrable rock-like unit in which they can protect each other, but they can also protect the children that look out kind of between them. So it's, it, it's a really powerful visual statement of solidarity, isn't it? A sort of, of solidarity in numbers. But also those faces, I think, beyond doubt, those are faces that look worn down. They're faces that look tired. They look grief stricken. Their eyes are in dark sockets. They look out nervously and anxiously. So it's a, a very uh, coherent, image that they make. It's a coherent unit that they make as a group. But it's also 
a group that seems to clearly have been formed out of adversity. It seems to clearly be a group that's been formed out of a sense of threat from the outside. So to create a work like this in 20s Germany, I think is really, really fascinating. The idea of a shattered people, I suppose. The idea of a group that has, has to rely upon each other to create a certain sense of solidarity. You notice that the title identifies them as being female. Where are the men? The men, the men are dead, the men have gone. So these are widows, I read it as being. Now look, I mean, th one thing that's also really important is how she made it. I mean, it's a woodcut. It's, the woodcut thing is not just about the dissemination of the image, it's also about the way it looks. It's also about the fact that a woodcut is a kind of sculpture. A woodcut is something that has to be made physically. So it's an enormously physical act of making. When you look around the outside, you can see little moments where the black smudges of the way it's been printed. That rough hewn aesthetic is part, I think, of the look of the object. It's part of the way that it expresses the idea of a kind of solidarity, of a kind of grit, which is there in the context of the work itself. I mean, it's, it's not prettified, that's deliberate as well. I mean, it's supposed to look kind of um, like basic and fundamental and straightforward. I mean, it looks a bit like folk art in some ways. It looks like medieval art in some ways. It looks like Romanesque art. It doesn't look like the neat kind of precise and rather finicky German Renaissance art that she certainly looked at. I mean, she's definitely looked at Dürer and Schongauer and those great artists of the Renaissance, but she wants a more, br a more sort of blunt, brutal, straightforward aesthetic for a, a brutal historical time. I mean, I mean, it, it, for me, it's it's not just in the in in what she shows. It, it's it's in the woodcut itself. It's in the fact that that to make it, she had to strain her muscles. She had to sweat. I mean, it's 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 hard work. I mean, she was a tough person physically because she was a, she was a maker. You know, she was used to making things. But at the same time, it is a physically exhausting thing to do to make a woodcut. So, so that's, I think, part of the toughness of the work. The way it's made is, is interwoven with how we come to make meaning from it. And that, I think, is, is um, really fundamental to understanding art, that, that sometimes art historians um, overlook the way works of art are made, or they overlook the materials. Actually, the materials are really central to how a work of art comes to be about anything. And I think that's true even with artists who outsource their production. The materials and how the materials have been treated is really central to what works of art are. So I think we have to pay more attention to that. And I think a, a, an object like this encourages us to do that because we can't not.